Welcome to GZT Tech, where we talk about tech that either I'm interested in or tech that we think that you should check out. And today, we have just that. So the Mavic Pro and the Spark had a baby, and it's called the Mavic Air. Now we're gonna take a look at this brand new drone and go in depth, take a look at all of the features that it has, and give you the breakdown and let you know if it's worth it or not. So let's get into this. This new drone can capture 4K video at 100 megabits per second, shoot 32 megapixel sphere panoramic pictures, has a 3-axis gimbal, smart capture features, 21 minute flight time, and so much more that we're going to get into in this in-depth review of the Mavic Air. A quick side note, this video was shot in 4K so don't be afraid to kick up the quality. So the Mavic Air comes in three colors which are Arctic White, Onyx Black, and Flame Red. And here we have the Onyx Black because it just gives a more professional look and the matte finish makes it that much better. Now let's do a quick unboxing of the new Mavic Air. Alright so upon opening the box we are greeted by this yellow sticker which says to review all of the paperwork. And sitting on top is a hard shell case which contains our Onyx Black Mavic Air in all of its matte black glory. So we'll put this to a side and uh, take a look at this in just a bit. But let's take out everything else that's in this box, which is um, on the upper right hand corner you see that everything is labeled exactly what's in here. So we get propeller guards, which is great if you're a beginner. We also get an extra set of propellers, which is always great. And we get the important paperwork and uh, intelligent battery information that you should uh, definitely take a good look at. Another key component to the Mavic Air is the remote. The brand new remote which is really nice because I mean it just fits into the palm of my hands and it'll easily fit into a jacket pocket. So let's put that to the side and take a look at what else we get. And in this one we get all of the necessary cables for the Mavic Air. So we get the power adapter cable. In this we get three cables but over here are two. Um, this is a micro to USB-C and then a micro to a micro. And then we also get these two little squares which I'll explain in a little bit. But here's our power adapter with two USBs. Uh, and uh, the other end connects into the battery of the Mavic Air. And we also get an extra set of control sticks. And I'll explain why these are extra. And then we also get this adapter for a USB-C to a micro USB. And then we also get a USB-C to a USB-A connector cable. So now let's take a look at the Mavic Air. What we've all been waiting for. And uh, boy is this thing labeled with stickers. But this thing is really tiny too. This thing just fits into my hand. And it also comes with this really nice hard shell case with a little mesh pocket in the back so you can store something. It also has a little diagram inside just in case you forget how to put it away. But I don't know why a lot of people have issues opening this up. I've heard a lot of things about this, but it's very simple. You just open up the back arms first and followed by the front ones. I mean, it's really not that hard. Now, another important thing is the new gimbal clamp, which secures the new three axis gimbal. And, uh,. This thing has gotten some uh, great footage for me, which you guys will definitely see in a little bit. And to put it on, it's the same way, and it's very easy. There's no battery power in this, so and uh, this little label here shows exactly how to take out the battery, which is the two little uh, slide uh, knobs, and you pull them out and uh, releases the battery. Inside is some important information, just in case you ever needed to. But this is a brand new little battery that's 2,375 milliamp hours and uh, it of course is not compatible with the Mavic Pro for those of you that own it. Uh, here's my iPhone 6s Plus. I just wanted to show you guys as for comparison of exactly how big it is. It isn't even the size of my iPhone 6s screen so uh, comparing the Mavic Air to the iPhone 6s Plus it's basically the same size which is really amazing. 
We also have these landing gears that come down, but these are not just landing gears as DJI incredibly designed the antennas for uh, the Mavic Air within them, which is really cool and very innovative. Here are the vision sensing system. We have two in the front. We have two on the bottom and two on the back. Now if we open up this little latch right here, you'll see that we have a USB-C connector and a slot for our micro SD card. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a micro SD card in there. Just make sure yours is uh, properly rated for the speed. And uh, that USB-C cable that we had earlier connects into that and you can easily transfer your data without having to take out the memory card. Now the Mavic Air does have an 8GB internal storage which is really great just in case you forget your memory card. Now on the top rear are the vents which allow the Mavic Air to keep cool. Now let's take a look at the second main component, the controller. So we have to take the sticker off. And here are our antennas for the controller. Make sure you keep them parallel to get the most maximum signal and range. Here we have a nice little controller with our shutter button, record button, and our gimbal wheel to control the camera up and down. Um, we also have the third cable, like I said. Uh, this is connected by a micro USB and it will be a lightning cable, which is for our iPhone, which I'll be using. Uh, sport mode button is located right in the center and from the Mavic Pro we are missing the main screen which is uh, probably one of the biggest differences. We have some battery power here which is great. Now you'll notice as we fold this out we have our lightning cable tucked in on the left hand side which is exactly what I need for the device that I'll be operating with. And tucked inside is our control sticks which is why I said the other ones were extra. And once you're done using them, you can put them right back in. But when you're ready to fly, take them out, screw them in. And basically, you're ready to go once you insert your mobile device. Here I got mine inserted, and just to get a feel for it, it feels comfortable and takes my iPhone 6S Plus with its case. Now these two little squares that we saw earlier in the package uh, are actually part of the controller uh, which is one of my biggest gripes with this uh, but it basically holds the cable in place and allows it to basically um, stay intact and allow your mobile device to connect properly this also slides up and down depending on where and how it seats so one of the biggest things that I personally wanted to know is if the Mavic Air would be able to be charged with a power bank so I took the supplied USB-C to USB-A connector, connected it to my power bank just to test this out and uh, you guys will have your answer. So once I connected this, uh, nothing came on so I took it out, connected it once again just to make sure that uh, everything is seated properly but to no avail. This cannot be charged with a power bank, which is sad. And I hope it's not a hardware limitation, but something that can be updated with software. So let's go ahead and take out the battery and uh, show how this thing can be charged. So you're going to need your power brick, the power adapter cable. Go ahead and plug those in together. Plug your power cable into a wall outlet and take your battery and connect it in and you will see that it does begin to charge. Now you can also charge the Mavic Air remote controller while it's charging the battery. So you can go ahead and take out the micro USB cable from there. Grab a micro USB separate cable and uh, connect your remote control to the power adapter and it'll begin charging. Now let's say you didn't have a separate micro USB cable. Remember that little adapter, the USB-C to a micro USB? Well you can take your supplied USB-C to USB-A connector, connect the USB-C in, into the female USB-C part, and essentially you have a micro USB cable. Connect the micro USB part into the remote control, and take your USB-A connector, connect it into your power brick, and 
There you go. Let's talk about the design. Now I mainly fly the Inspire 1 and 2 and Phantom 4 Pro, but never bought a Mavic Pro, but I have flown it many times. In comparison to the Mavic Pro, the Air is half the size of the Pro and weighs only 430 grams, or just about a pound. The batteries are much different than the Mavic Pros, so more batteries, here we come. It has vents located in the top rear which also help the Mavic Air keep cool. It also has fold out arms just like the Mavic Pro, but the propellers don't fold out as they don't need to. There's also this little piece that comes out to give some clearance, but that's not all they're for. DJI cleverly designed the antennas within this little piece to help maximize range. How do you update the Mavic Air? Well if you guys don't know how to do that, then don't worry, we'll have a separate video on that within a day or two, but in the meantime, you can fly it without having to update it, so stay tuned for that. Once that video is made, we'll put a link in the description and have an annotation here on the screen for you guys to go ahead and navigate to that video and go ahead, update your Mavic Air. Alright, so now that we are in Smart Capture, it's actually going to follow me. And I'm not even controlling this at all. Now if I walk towards this, it'll end up backing up. Now the best part about it is that I can control this with my hands as if I was a Jedi using the Force. Alright, so now I'm just going to go ahead and walk around and have this thing follow me. Now there's also a mode on your controller that underneath the little X, if you guys click on this, it switches between the person and um, profile mode. So right now we're in profile mode capturing this. So it'll follow me as I walk this way. It'll constantly be staying in that position. So let's just stop. As you can see, we control this with height, up and down, and we can definitely make it go left to right. And that is basically Smart Capture. All right, so now with the beeping, uh, we're gonna try to record uh, the new modes so I'm gonna start recording actually, and let's get in here and we'll try some quick shots. Obviously it can't start recording with the thing on, but we have features like Droney, Circle, Helix, Rocket, Boomerang, and Asteroid. And we've already tested uh, a lot of this out. Uh, aircraft's too low, so there we go. That's how we want our starting position. So let's go ahead and do Asteroid. So. That is what Asteroid looks like. We're gonna tap on us, and it'll do its own countdown, and we will look at the camera, and it'll do its own thing. And you can cancel at any time by hitting that little X, and then it'll stop. So at this point, it's capturing the panoramic picture, 32 megapixel panoramic picture and stitches it all together by the time it comes right back down, which is amazing. So we'll go ahead and test out Boomerang. Boomerang should be a good one. Boomerang basically kind of goes around us. So let's come down a little bit. Put us into proper frame. And I think that's about right, it's about good. So this is Boomerang, so let's do this. Go ahead and tap on us. Two, one. So it's going all around us. Takes out backwards. Oh no. 
and will come right around us just like this right back to its starting position so again you will really want to make sure that you are in a wide open area we do have some trees around us but they are definitely far off so make sure you're in a nice wide open area where you're able to capture these shots because you don't want to hurt your new drone so let's go ahead and test out another feature uh, let's just do a droney classic droney let's do one of those okay ready we'll do a droney it's, a it's like a selfie it's a droney, it's a droney. Okay, cool. okay, ready so we will smile and start Three. And the quick shot is done. As you can see on the on the screen, you can see its home point or where we are, which is really cool. Okay, so now we're gonna take some HDR shots. So let's go ahead and uh, fire this bad boy up. Take off. Yes. And always make sure you're in the right area to fly. All right. So let's go ahead and go up. So we're gonna fly up and see what kind of shots we can get. We are taking pictures in HDR mode. What is APAS? It stands for Advanced Pilot Assistance System, which means that when you fly around, the sensors will avoid obstacles, but instead of coming to a stop, it'll scan ahead and figure a way around it without stopping. So that means you can push the throttle full forward and it'll go around it. It's still a good idea to stay away from obstacles as much as possible, but this feature makes it so that you can calm your nerves and is a good idea for beginners. It can also be enabled straight from the main screen on the left hand side, you'll see a triangle and when you click on it, you'll get a confirmation that it's enabled. It can also be useful in features such as active track also. The slow motion 120 frames per second at 1080p is amazing. Our testing showed smooth slow-mo video. Sport mode allows the air to zip across at 42.5 miles an hour. So what are my overall thoughts on the Mavic Air? This pocket sized drone is portable and hands down amazing. We got pretty close to the advertised 21 minute flight time. Love the fact that it has at least an 8GB internal storage just in case, but make sure to manually switch over to record onto an SD card when inserted, otherwise it'll record into the internal storage. The 4K at 100 megabits per second is crisp and you cannot ask for more in such a small form factor. With its improved 3-axis gimbal, which is more dampened than the Mavic Pro, makes it for a smooth capture. The smart capture feature allowed us to be one with the force and be able to fly the Mavic Air with just the palm of our hands and some gestures which is very cool. The quick shots make getting cinematic shots even easier with the addition of the two new shots it sets it apart from the rest. If I was to complain about one thing then it would have to be the little cable thing connecting to your device that takes much longer than it should but other than that it's amazing. So at $7.99 with what it has to offer I say go for it. It's definitely worth getting and gets the approval of me and my team. If this video has been helpful and you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. This is GZT Tech and we will see you guys in the next one.